Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to be sketching the graph of the polar curve R is equal to cosine 2 theta. So the first thing we want to do when graphing a polar curve and we have like a trigonometric function like cosine 2 theta, we want to first draw the R is equal to cosine theta but like in x y a term i guess so the y axis is going to be the r the x axis is going to represent the theta and if we draw cosine two theta we would just have here's one and here's negative one and it's going to be pi and here's pi over two And if we just sketch this, well, one whole rotation in the graph of r is equal to cosine 2 theta will be just pi. So our graph will Okay, I know this isn't perfect, but we have the curve, we have the graph cosine of two of theta. And so we're going to use this to graph the polar curve r is equal to cosine two theta. Okay, so to graph the polar curve cosine two theta, you should already know the basics by now. And so here, our largest radius will be 1 okay so now we're going to label like each curve even though this is just one curve we're going to call the curve from theta is equal to 0 to theta is equal to pi divided by 4 one curve one and this one's going to be curve two curve three curve four curve five curve six curve seven and curve eight and so we're first going to draw how it will look like from theta is equal to zero to theta is equal to pi over four Um, this is theta is equal to power 4 and when theta is equal to 0 we have one, the radius is 1 when theta is equal to power 4 we have 0 so it'll just these two dots will have to connect and how do we know what it looks like well we don't have to draw it perfectly but as you can see as as theta gets closer or gets closer to pi over 4 or larger then the radius will become smaller so like if we had a circle okay so if we had a circle with radius 1 I'm only going to draw this in a quadrant 1 we would have something like this right and so this is radius 1 and if and like this would be a smaller radius smaller 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 and so to draw that the radius is getting smaller in connecting, we would have something like this. So I don't know if you can really see it, but the radius is getting smaller. This is, so this would be at like radius one half because this is about one half. And if we make a circle, it would kind of look like that, right? Okay, now I'm going to erase everything that we don't need. Okay, so now this is going, this of course is our first curve. So we're going to label this first curve too, just to help us and label some things so, so that we can stay organized. And now we're going to draw the curve from theta is equal to power four to power two. When theta is equal to power four, we got zero. And when theta is equal to power two, we have negative one. And 
if you already know the basics, then you would know that if you have a radius, so like if, if we're talking about theta is equal to pi over two, which is here, this line, and we have a negative radius, like negative one, then we would flip it to the other side and we would be talking about this one. And so, but if our radius was positive and it was one, then we would have to connect this dot with this dot and it would connect from this side. And so, but since it's the negative side, but since the radius is negative, we just, <laughs> I don't know how to explain this. It's just the opposite side. So like these, this is the opposite side. And so we're going to be working on this side. As, the th as theta gets closer to power two, where the radius gets closer to negative one, or the radius gets smaller. So if we draw that, it would look like this. And then we just drew our second curve. Now for the third curve, from theta is equal to pi over 2 to 3 pi over 4. That would be this half of the second quadrant. And when theta is equal to 3 pi over 4, we have 0. And when theta was equal to pi over 2, it was negative 1. So since we have a radius that is negative again so the radius will be always negative except the radius will be getting bigger and approaching zero we'll again work on the opposite side so we were going to work on this side the half of the second quadrant but since the since we're going to work on the opposite side since we're working with negative radius values we're going to work on the exact opposite which is this and so we start with this dot and go, go to this dot. And since the radius is getting smaller and approaching zero, you would have a curve that looks like this. And this, oops, and this is labeled three. If we have the curve, I mean, if we have theta is equal to three pi over four to theta is equal to pi, we would have, well, we'd be talking about this part of the second quadrant and so this is the fourth curve and as theta gets closer to pi the radius also gets larger and approaches one and so we could say that the fourth curve looks like this and then for the fifth curve of theta is equal to pi to theta is equal to um this what this is <laughs> Okay, all right, so this is five pi over four. This, so pi, five pi over four is here. And so we're going to be working on this side. The radius is getting smaller and approaching zero as theta gets larger and approaches five pi over four. So that means that our fifth curve would look something like this. And then when, when for the sixth curve, we have theta is equal to five pi over four to three pi over two, which we are working with negative radius values again. So theta is equal to, okay, so we would, we, if, we did, if we didn't have negative radius values, we would be working on this side. But since we are working with negative radius values, we would be working on the opposite side, which would, and the opposite from here is right here. So we're going to work on this side for the sixth curve. Since when theta is approaching 3 pi over 2, when theta is approaching 3 pi over 2, the radius approaches negative 1 and gets smaller. So we would have our sixth curve that looks something like this. So this is our sixth curve. And for our seventh curve, we have theta is equal to 3 pi over 2 to uh, this radian, which is 7 pi over 4. And that would be 
3 power 2 is here and 7 power 4 is here. So we would originally be working in this area, but since we are working with negative radius values, we're going to work on the up exact opposite side. And the exact opposite from here is here. And so we would be working in this area. As theta approaches 3 power 4, our radius gets smaller or larger and approaches 0. So that would give our seventh curve that looks like this. Oops. And then for our final curve, the eighth curve, we have theta is equal to 7 pi over 4 to 2 pi. And that would be here. And since theta, as theta approaches 2 pi, our radius gets larger and approaches 1. And so that would give us our eighth curve that looks like this. And that was our eighth curve. Okay, so this is what our polar curve r is equal to cosine 2 theta would look like. And that would be the end of this video. Thanks for watching, everyone. Please subscribe.